Healing beings, hello, it's Danny, the Grumpy Gen X mystic, and I want to talk about Leo season 2024. I'm going to do a quick um, readout of some of the key um, planetary alignments during the next 30-ish uh, days or so. We go from um, July 22nd, 24 to um, August 22nd, 2024. Um, I'm going to run through the dates that you want to write down and we'll, during the course of this coming month, of course, uh, play together, um, especially play together because Leo, it's Leo, it's Leo season. Oh, such a relief, such a relief in my natal chart. Um, both Jupiter and Venus are in Leo. So I am very extraordinarily extra special, playful person every Leo season. So I'm relieved to be out of cancer. I mean, I, I always like bite deep into the apple of cancer season, but Leo is such a great relief. Um, okay. So running down the key dates, write these down, write these down. Maybe during the course of the month, write these down and uh, come back to me, come back to me, write a comment um, in this video if you want, come back and let me know how things go for you on the days I'm going to mention here. So this day that I'm recording this, um, which is July 22nd, um, and this has been the last couple of days, but the moon, pardon me, the sun is in opposition to Pluto. So the sun is just crossed, it's in zero degrees of Leo, by definition at the start of Leo season. Um, and so it's opposing uh, Pluto up there in Aquarius. I've spoken extensively since back in uh, January of this year, 2024, about Pluto and Aquarius and uh, this, this, uh, this transit over the coming many, many years, which will challenge us all to, I'm gonna say it again, my potty mouth, um, really decide whether we give a shit about being part of the overall collective around us and, and participate in the, in the world and really be integrated in a meaningful way, right? That's that Pluto and Aquarius. So the sun is down there um, in Leo, wanting to now, it's coming home, the sun's come home into Leo, um, both in the exoteric and esoteric chart, uh, the sun is the ruler of Leo. So the sun is at home in Leo, um, it's this playful space, it's this creative space, it's this bright space, it's this nice hot summery space, summery even if you're on the Southern Hemisphere, it's still a summery energy, that moon in Leo, sun in Leo. I want to say moon in Leo, so let's go to the next thing. Um, the moon will um, be, uh, the new moon in Leo is on the 4th. So August 4th is the next thing I want you to write down. Um, we'll talk about it more in future videos, but um, the, the new moon in Leo, it's a pretty clean, I'm going to, I call it a clean chart. Of course, there's always aspects um, if you are working with larger orbs on the chart, but it's a relatively clean chart um, uh, in, ter in terms of the, the lack of strong um, squares or trines or, or, or oppositions, etc., except for that conjunction of the sun and moon um, in Leo. So it's a very um, it's a very clean, um, playful moment. Maybe um, you know. Uh, uh, channeling our childlike um, spirit, are just just it, it, it's a giddy moment. It's a giddy moment. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I think August fourth is a giddy new moon moment. Um, backing up to to this today's opposition with Sun and uh, Pluto, um, it it is a foreboding of where we're going to end the month, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, towards the end of the month, the, the full moon in, um, where the heck is that full moon in? The full moon in uh, Aquarius, of course, yeah, um, at the end of the month is going to be pretty intense. Um, and I have the chart here, and you can see a couple of triangular shapes, and I'll get, I'll get to that in a few minutes. So, um, but today we start with this opposition of the Sun and Pluto. Um, and the sun wants to be playful and like childish and childlike and, and creative. Um, and Pluto, again, in Aquarius is, is challenging us to be very, very serious and like having a sense of almost like devotion um, and just like actually using our own individual will um, to affect um, the overall collective. Um, so that it's a really serious, like I'm marching forward type of mentality while the sun just now in Leo is, is, is very playful and childlike. So that's the opposition today. Um, I'm going to say, allow your, allow, hopefully allow your, allow your son to win in this, in this, uh, sun Pluto opposition today. Um, let's just have some, 
a, a couple of weeks of, of playfulness and creativity um, before the serious stuff happens later in the month. Okay, I'm going so slow, I always talk too much. Um, so I talked about uh, the fourth when we have the new moon. Now on the seventh, um, this is the next date to write down, in the earlier days, so on the 25th of July, Mercury shifts into Virgo, and then on the 4th of um, August, um, the same day as the new moon, Venus shifts into Virgo, and they, on August 7th, um, Mercury and Venus will be conjunct in three, de three degrees of Virgo. Now, Virgo, of course, is a dutiful, serious, diligent, um, grounded, and practical place to be in, space, you know, overall, overall space to be in, um, focusing on I'm going to call it call upon the healing aspect of our of our psyche of our awareness um, and our communicative intelligent nature of Mercury combining with our compassionate um, uh, just in touch with beauty um, in touch with love and partnership uh, spirit of Venus is all coming together in this conjunction so it's it's again I would say just a few days after that just open, open, giddy new moon um, in Leo. It, it's a moment in Virgo of, of just in, in a more, in a more thoughtful way, because um, Virgo is going to slow us down and ground us to be more thoughtful, like a, a more thoughtful, hopeful, um, contemplative moment um, and really allowing ourselves to reconnect with the sun, the sun over there in Leo with, with, with an appreciation of for creativity in life and how creativity in life um, is important for us to be prepared for those difficult, challenging moments that are actually um, always to come at some point. Um, so, uh, so again, uh, being like devoted to our creative spirit um, is where I'm landing with that that um, that moment of Mercury Venus conjunct on uh, August seventh. Now. Things start to get a little more interesting on August 14th. We have a Mars-Jupiter conjunction at 16 degrees of Gemini. Um, I want to pause and say 16 degrees, a one and a six translates to a seven, which is a very, again, a very creative, um, like all bets are off, everything is possible, possible possibility and magic number seven. Um, and this is in Gemini, um, which is again, a very like light and open and like f refreshing, uh, moment to, to be in. So Mars and Jupiter come together. Um, I was talking um, in my last uh, long form video about um, the, the process of working towards um, a moment later in the year where, where, where we will take as a soldier of the sun in a very serious way, um, in a very, with, with a sense of idealism and devotion, um, take action as a soldier of the sun and be part of positive change in the world. Um, I'm a grumpy Gen X mystic because I know that this positive change is possible and I get frustrated sometimes when I don't think that others around me see that possibility, that hopefulness, and that makes me grumpy. <laughs> um, so our Mars-Jupiter conjunction on the 14th of August um, is, is reactivating that like sense of like hopeful action. So we're, we're going to start to, in that we have an opportunity, I should say, in that day. Um, with the Gemini aspect to have a really um, clear-minded focus on the right action that we can take towards that more hopeful future that we're all trying to build towards. Um, that's what I take out of that, that Mars-Jupiter conjunction in Gemini on the 14th of August. So we have um, today, the very first day, um, the opposition sun to Pluto. We're gonna to try to lean into the sun because Pluto is more for the future time. We have the fourth on the new moon, which is a very open, giddy space. We have the, the seventh, the Mercury-Venus uh, conjunction, that, that, that contemplative moment, um, uh, understanding the, uh, the power of our creativity, our creative self. We have the Mars-Jupiter conjunction on the 14th, getting greater clarity around taking right action in the name of hope and hopefulness, okay? Um, then we have on the 18th, a Sun-Mercury conjunction. Um, at 26 degrees, Leo, um, that's just, I, I would say, it's a follow-on to the Mercury, Venus, and the Mars, Jupiter. Um, this time, the sun is, is, is actually um, uh, causing us to begin to take some action. So I think that we will, we will be active on the 18th 
um, with Mercury and the Sun conjunct, maybe make a making a very clear declaration, a very clear declaration about like your your true commitment to this right, this taking right action, taking hopeful action in the future. Your your true commitment, how you actually self-identify with this with this with the idea of being a soldier of the Sun. Okay, um, that is on the eighteenth of of August. Now the doozy of, the, of this chart, now all this is quite positive and, and growing and strengthening and creativity and hope and devotion. Um, and again, I, I suggest you go back to my, um, my last long video, which was about the, um, the full moon in Capricorn, um, the second full moon in Capricorn that happened in um, cancer season, um, because, because this full moon in Aquarius, uh, which comes on the 19th, um, it's kind of a doozy moment and it's, a, it's, it's I, I'm going to describe it as the first real test of our, of our will. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a first really serious, it's almost like a, it's a trial. It's, it's a trial about whether we're really serious about being that, uh, that force for positive change. And I just want to pause and say, and I say this all the time on my channel, um, you can be a force for positive change in small ways. Okay. So I'm not trying to, right now we're talking, there's all the politics of the presidential season happening around us. And there's some, some pretty big things going on in the world that are ugly and disturbing. Um, it's all very, very big and overwhelming, but, um, being a soldier of the sun and being a force for positive change can be just within our own little sphere, our own little sphere around us, the neighbors across the street, the people in our faith community, um, we don't have to be overly ambitious um, about it and, and overly exaggerate the sense that we're just too small to make any, any mark on the world. Let's don't do that. That makes me grumpy too. And today I'm not very grumpy. I'm my grumpometer. I'm like a, I'm like a, I'm like a two. Uh, I'm like a sparrow, sparrow star today. So, okay. Getting back to this, uh, a preview to this full moon. Um, I'm just going to, be brief because I'm already talking. I can see for 12 minutes or more. Um, we have the, of course, the sun, um, moon opposition as, as is the definition of a full moon. Um, in that moment, the Mercury is, um, still conjunct with the sun. It, they had been conjunct the day before Mercury is in retrograde during this point in time. So we have Mercury conjunct with the sun still opposing the moon. Um, over there in Aquarius, 27 degrees Aquarius. Um, and both the Sun Mercury and the Moon are squaring, squaring in tension with Uranus in Taurus. And again, I've talked a lot about Uranus in Taurus on this channel in recent months, um, that plant of rebellion and sudden change and shocks. So that's a tension that's going on. Uranus is, is, is creating this really um, mm, uh, somewhat disturbing, but 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 containing possibility tension with the with the Sun Mercury Moon opposition. So that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is that also on this day, um, there's an opposition between uh, Venus in Virgo, uh, directly opposed to Saturn over there in Pisces. And on top of that, this is why this is such a complicated um, day. They're also both being squared. So Venus Virgo, Saturn Pisces are being squared. That same, that, 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 that difficult tension with um, Jupiter, Jupiter um, in Gemini. So uh, we have these two triangles again I, as I can I'm trying to show you here you see those two triangles um, and I, I will speak more fully about this on future videos um, but this is uh, again uh, the first day of having a big major trial um, of our ability and willingness to actually um, act in and act our intention of contributing something um, tangible um, as a soldier of the sun to this march towards hope and faith and possibility. I know I talk a big, big, I talk big things um, on my videos. 
Um, and again, I'm grumpy because I know it's all possible and I'm grumpy because I look around and too many people have their heads up their butts and they're scrolling on stupidity and, and social media and no, this is not stupidity. This is good stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to end this video with a, this is my one version of my essence fat medicine wheel and I'm going to drop the, the drop my match on this medicine wheel um, to further encourage us. This will give us a little visualization moment. Um, um, okay. So it's, it, it is the map, the matches is, is drawing from the east up into the north and it's going, it's getting, it's pointing the back of the match on the word openness and it's pointing up to the word presence in the, in the north. It's actually in the northeast. Um, so the north, northeast in my mess, my, my medicine wheel, um, is a, is a very discerning space. It's very, dis, a very peaceful discerning space. It's actually the end of a cycle. It's the end of cycles. Um, and so while we're in this very playful, childlike, um, uh, creative um, Leo season, and we're experiencing all of these really um, mostly positive, hopeful um, moments I just described um, as the planets suggest to us, the essence map, the medicine wheel, is also inviting us to maintain uh, or to, 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 in our meditations, yeah, when we sit for our meditations, um, when we close our eyes and we visualize um, our surroundings. So believe it or not, I have a place of snow and snowfall. And I know that Leo is, of course, the sun and fire um, fixed fire, um, and it's warmth and it's play, right? And I've talked about creativity. Um, but this is actually slowing us down. So in those, in those meditative moments, despite all of the wild and hopeful and high energy, um, suggestions I've been giving you now, it's, see, I'm slowing myself down to be in a place of quiet snowfall, gentle, quiet snowfall in the early evening amongst the trees. So this will bring us balance to contemplate the quiet snowfall in the forest in the early evening. Yeah. That's the counterbalance to all this fiery Leo energy. And so let's pull just one card to close out this, this chat. One card. We are soldiers of the sun. Let's have this playful, creative, giddy time of Leo season, but we're gonna be really challenged on the 19th of August. So we have the Eight of Cups here, Eight of Cups. We've been doing um, a lot, again, in recent months. So let's see, in the month of February, I did a lot of shadow work um, videos here. As I mentioned in, in, um, in January, lots of Pluto and Aquarius. Um, we had some really uh, big um, sun and moon activity in, in March, April. We had the, the Jupiter, Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus that happened this in recent months. Um, it's been a very big series of, of occurrences. If you follow astrology, the first half of 2024, um, it does get quieter. The sky gets, the sky gets quieter. Um, the second half of the year, there are, there are a number of oppositions that happen now because of the way the planets sort themselves out. We had lots of like big conjunctions. So there will be oppositions. And these oppositions are the reason why I believe I've been, I've been like channeling this like soldier of the sun concept. Um, the idea that we are part of the world around us, you know, we have to make, make, make ourselves, we can't just like hide in our spiritual practice. We do a spiritual practice for the sake of our own soul's evolution and change and growth. 
um, and maturation, but also because we're here, we are tangible, you know, beings. And while we have this life, um, it's important to be part of something that matters, you know? And so I have this, so the, this, this eight of cups for me, um, is I, I have congratulations. Um, the word congratulations coming into my mind for all of the hard work that we've done together here in this space, the first um, half of the year here for all the hard work. And, um, and now as we turn to, um, and, and the work was more internal, right? Um, I've been doing lots of internally focused videos for the past six months. Now, later in uh, the month of July, in the next few days, late July, early August also, and this is part of uh, Leo season this year, um, we'll, we'll begin to see in the, in, the, in the night sky, in the western sky, um, the evening star, Venus. And so we're, the evening star versus morning star, the evening star is more oriented towards others and towards the world, while the morning star is our own internal, uh, shining our love inwardly. So now we start to shine our love outwardly again in the second second part of this year um, and be part of that positive, hopeful change. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to come back to this 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 um, meditation with visualizations in, in, in this like snowfall setting. Um, and we're congratulating ourselves with the eight of cups for all that good hard work. And now we're going to, we're going to move and turn our attention, um, towards the fire, more towards the fire, the challenge, the challenges and take right action. I did not expect this video to be so long. I thought I will sit down for this intro to Leo season and just have a quick five or six minute run through the, 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 the planets. Uh, if you watch my videos, you know I, I have a problem being brief. That's always been one of my challenges. Sun and Gemini. What can I tell you? Um, all right. Always be lighthearted. Don't be too grumpy. Today, I, as I said, I'm a sparrow star. Uh, low on the grumpy meter. Um, you're never alone. You're always connected.